Hi, my name is Bohadar Ahmedov. Welcome to the course of Probability and Statistics. In our previous lectures, we talked about the combinatorial analysis, and especially we have derived a couple of formulas in order to calculate the number of the permutations or combinations. And later on, we defined the probabilities and we tried to connect the concept of the probability using some mathematical quantities. And in this lecture, we are going to try to understand why we actually need the combinatorial analysis in order to calculate the probabilities. And we will try to connect these two concepts together. But before we, we, I'm going to do this, I would like to give you a brief uh, definition of the probabilities one more time. So if you remember, we would like to estimate the probability of some event. So whether this event is going to happen or not. So how likely this event is going to happen. And, the, um, and, and in order to do this, we define so-called sample space. So in our experiment, all possible outcomes uh, of our experiment is going to be contained in this sample space, which is going to be as the uh, omega. And the event is going to be just a part of the sample space. And whenever we would like to es uh, estimate the probability that this event happens or not, what we are going to do is we are going to basically count the number of the items inside the set A, basically inside the event A, number of items in A, and divide this to the number of items in the omega. So basically, we are finding the proportion of this part of this event A inside this omega. So if this event A is the whole part of the omega, then the probability is going to be equal to 1. And if this is half of this omega, it's going to be 50% and so on. So let me give you a couple of examples. So the first example is going to be with the kinds. So let's say you are going to our experiment is tossing a coin. If you toss a coin, you might have only two possible outputs, either tails, either hats. And so that is why our sample space, the set which is going to contain all the outputs, is going to contain only two items, either tails I the hats, right? So what I want is I would like to find, for example, a probability of obtaining the tail. So let's say event A is going to be just the tails. So if I would like to find out what is the probability of tossing a coin and getting the tails, what I have to do is I just need to count the number of the items inside this A. 1, and divide this to the number of the items in the whole sample space, which is going to be 2, which is 0 0.5, or equivalently, we say that this is 50%. So graphically, it would look like this. So this is our sample space. So it basically split it into the two parts, right? So the tails and the hats. And defining the probability of getting the tails is basically finding the proportion of this part out of the whole sample space. So basically, this is the half of this, right? 50% of the whole area or the whole, um, uh, whole set of the sample. Uh, so that is why it is going to be 50%. Uh, the, the event is going to happen. So let's consider a couple of more examples. So another example is going to be a, uh, um, with a rolling and die. So die is the standard six-sided cube with the numbers in each side. So it's, for example, one, two, three, and so on. So it usually has six sides. So you roll a die. And when you roll a die, you might have, uh, so, you, you, so your result is going to be the number which is going to be on the face, right? So you might get one, you might get two, three, four, five, or six. So your sample space in this case is going to contain six items, right? So sample space, again, one more time, it's the all possible outputs you can get from your experience, uh, from your experiment, sorry. So in this case, you might get one, two, three, four, five, Six. So what I want is now, uh, it, I would like to find out the probability of obtaining an odd number, 
right? In order to do this, we need to create the uh, event, which is going to be part of the sample space. So event A is always part of the sample space, right? Or it might be the whole sample space as well. So if I want to find the probability of getting an odd number, um, what I have to do is I need, I need to find out the outputs which are odd. And I have to include them to here. So it's going to be 1, 3, and 5. And probability of obtaining an odd number is going to be just the ratio of the number of the items in the A, which is going to be 3, to the number of the items in the whole sample space, 6 which is going to be a 1 over 2 again. So graphically, it's going to be a similar graph as before. So I've got lots of items in my sample space. For example, 1, uh, 3, 5, 2, 4, 6. And a value, so whenever you choose one number, and if you would like to know what is the probability of choosing an odd number, it's going to be just a proportion of odd numbers inside your sample space to the whole number of the items inside, inside your space. So in this case, the number of the odd numbers is 50% out of the whole uh, set of numbers inside your sample space. So that is why probability of choosing an odd number is going to be 50%. So now let's so the question is why we actually need a combinatorial analysis in calculating the probabilities. So in order to do this, so let's make another experiment. So let's call this experiment number three. So toss a coin. So our experiment is toss a coin three times. Okay, and then what we have to do is we need to find the probability, find the probability of obtaining two hats and one tails. So this is our experiment, this is what we have to find. So we are going to try to find this probability from the concept of the sets. So we are going to build a sample space, then we are going to build an event, then we are going to calculate the probability. So if you toss the coin three times, then uh, how many different outputs you might get? So in order to answer to this question, you, what you need to remember is you need to make the three boxes. If you remember, this is how we are calculate. Uh, so how we how we calculated the number of the combinations and permutations in the combinatorial analysis. So you've got three boxes. So in a f so every box is going to be your result when you toss a coin. So the first box is going to contain the result of tossing a coin for the first time, and it might have two outputs, right? So either tails, either hats. So the second one as well, two outputs. The third one as well two outputs. So in total, it's going to be just the multiplication of all of these twos. It's going to be eight different outputs. So let us just list all of these outputs. So the sample space is all possible outputs which you can obtain when you toss a coin three times. So it is, for example, you might get hats, 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 or you might get hats, hats, tails, hats, tails, hats, hats, tails, tails, or ta tails, hats, hats, tails, hats, tails, 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 hats, tails, tails, tails. So all of the eight outputs are, are given here. So uh, where every number H means the hats and T would mean the tails. So wh what we want is we would like to find a probability of obtaining two hats and one tails, right? So in order to do this, we need to ch create another subset of the sample space, which we are going to call as an event. So here into the subset, we need to include all the cases where we have exactly two hats and one tails, two hats and one tails. So I've got here one case, for example, and two cases, right? Two hats. In this one, sorry. So three, three cases. So H, H, T, H, T, H, 
T H H. So this is all the cases where we have exactly two hats and one tails. So now if I would like to find out the probability of getting two hats and one tail in our experiment, I just need to count the number of the items inside A. So how many items we have inside A? There are three items here and divide this to the number of the items in a whole sample space omega. So inside the omega we have eight items. Good, so the probability of obtaining two hats and one tails is going to be equal to uh, three over eight. So now the question is, do we really actually need these two sets in order to calculate the probability? So let, let me write down this question. Do we need to create these two sets, create these two sets to calculate the probability. So uh, this is the definition of the probability actually, right? So we are building the sets and finding the probabilities using the number of the items inside the sets. And we actually don't need the sets in order to calculate the probabilities. What we need is we need the number of the items inside the set. No, we need we need only the number of the items number of the items inside these sets and we can find the number of the items inside the sets using the combinatorial analysis so let me uh, solve this problem the same problem as we solve here using the combinatorial analysis so you, your experiment is so let us start problem from the beginning one more time so toss the coin three times toss a coin three times so you find then find the probability of obtaining two hats and one tails Right? So first of all, we need to find out how many items inside the sample space we are going to have. In order to do this, we need to make the boxes, three boxes. Right. So on the first place, it's going to be the result of the first, uh, first experiment, first trial, when we toss a coin. There are two possible outcomes, either hats, either tails, here as well, and here as well. So the total number of the outputs, it's going to be equal to the multiplication of all of the three twos, it's going to be eight. So now, th this is actually the number of the items in a whole sample space. So what we need to do is we need to count, hey, how many of them are going to have exactly two hats and one tails. So in order to do this, I'm going to write down the sequence, hats, hats, tails, right? So what I have to do is I just need to find out in how many different permutations and how many different orders I might have this letters like I I'm, I'm pretty sure that I have to have t only two hats and one tail and the only question is in which order I'm going to get these numbers either HHT or THH in order to do this if you remember we need to use the formula of the permutations so the number of the interchanges of these three items would be simply equal to the three factorials right but the problem is these two items H and H are the same, so they don't like. So I need to, so if whenever you ch change the places H and H, it doesn't create the new sequence, right? So that is why we need to exclude them. So we can do this by just dividing this as a two factorials. So please go to our lecture about the combinatorial analysis where we have discussed this issue. So the number of the permutations of three objects where two of them are alike is going to be equal to the three factorials over two factorials, which is going to be equal to the simply three. And then you have to put the three to here, so the probability of obtaining two hats and one tails is going to be equal to the three over eight. And you can see here that actually to solve this problem, I don't need to create all of the sets, this set and this set. And the only thing which we need is to number of the items inside those sets. And the reason why we need the combinatorial analysis is to calculate those numbers. So let me make one more example, which is going to be a little bit more difficult than this one, but very similar. So another example. So toss a coin 10 times. Toss a coin 10 times. And find the probability of having 
find the probability of having seven heads and three tails. Okay, so in order to find the probability of having seven heads and three tails, what I have to do is we first of all need to find hey how many different possible outputs we can have when we toss a coin ten times. In order to do this, we need to draw ten boxes, right? So one, two, and so on, ten. So for every box, we are going to write down the result from the corresponding trial. For example, the result from the first trial is going to go to the first place. So there are two possible outputs. They might be H or T. So in the second one as well, and so on. And even in the last one, there are two possible outputs. So the number of the all possible outputs is going to be equal to the multiplication of all of this two. It's going to be two in the power of 10. So this is how many items which we are going to have in a sample space. So this is the number of items or outputs inside the sample space. So now what we have to do is we need to find out the number of the items. So we need to find number of um, items with exactly seven heads and three tails. So in order to do this, what we have to do is we need, just need to write down seven H's and three tails, three T's. So finding the number of the items with seven hats and three tails basically means, so find the number of the permutations of these 10 items. Find the number of permutations, number of permutations of these 10 items. So these two expressions are equivalent. So if you remember, the number of the permutations of 10 items would be simply 10 factorial. But here we have to divide this to a couple of terms, right? So since the first seven H's are the same, are similar, we have to divide this to the seven factorials. And also we have to divide this to the three factorials because the rest of the three T's are similar as well. So if you do the calculation, it's going to be multiplication of the 8, 9, and 10. It is a 6, right? 3 times 2. So it's going to be equal to the 120. So probability of obtaining 7 hats and 3 tails, that's going to be equal to the 120 divided to the 2 in the power of 10, which is going to be equal to the 1024. So in this lecture, we talked about the probability, how to calculate the probability using the sets and also the essence of knowing um, the combinatorial analysis in order to calculate the probabilities. So in our next lectures, we're going to talk about the axioms of the probability and a couple of rules, such as additional rule and the multiplication rule.